Hello and welcome to the demonstration video on the Auto Roller 747 2017 model. So we'll start around the outside and then we'll move on to the controls on the inside. First things first then, so to open the bonnet on these and everything to do with the cab, the bonnet release is just here. Um, your tyre pressures are just on this pillar here. Uh, best to refer to the tyres themselves though, because some of them use specialist tyres. So there's your bonnet release catch. And then just underneath the bonnet, there's just a lever there to pull. So underneath the bonnet we have um, your uh, washer fluid fill is just there. Uh, coolant. Uh, brake fluid is just there. Uh, oil fill there and your dipstick uh, to check the oil level is just there um, If you ever need to jump start these vehicles the positive terminal goes onto that blade there and then the negative or the ground is that little Tab there. So that's the uh, the black terminal just goes onto there to uh, blank off these the windscreen and the side windows uh, for during the evening if you want to darken those off the, in the garage there is um, what are called silver screens and they fit onto the uh, onto the windscreen and round the side windows just with suckers onto the inside uh, so that darkens off the cab section of the motorhome for evening use so we'll work our way around the vehicle the first locker we come to is the gas locker so this will require two uh, gas bottles. You can just use one, but if you want to put two in, it'll it'll take two gas bottles. Um, so what happens is you've got an inline regulator here, so you don't need a regulator on top of the bottles. The bottle sits in there, um, and then this uh, hose uh, screws into that section of the uh, regulator, and then this end goes into your bottles. As we work our way around further around the vehicle, this is where the fridge is situated on the inside. These are just vents for the fridge, it draws cool air in at the on the bottom vent and expels it in the top. Just make sure that that's kept free of debris, um, so that's ventilation for the uh, the fridge. The next one along is your mains in, uh, inlet, so there's a mains uh, socket required that clips into there. So one end goes into there and there's like a little lid that slides into that section there and then the round section slides into there and it's got a little tab there so it can only go in one way. To release that you press that lever down there and then that releases the, the mains cable. So that's to get mains into your vehicle and it'll charge your leisure battery and allow you to use mains appliances. Next one along is a, a mains uh, outlet, uh, sorry gas outlet point so if you I've uh, got a, an outside barbecue or a, a gas heater or something for outside. It allows you to tap in to the gas bottles, uh, the supply that's coming from your gas bottles to save you having to take the, the gas bottles out. So there's a tap that just goes into there and then you, 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 you unscrew that and then push a, a tube onto the end of that tap and then you can um, take that tube off to, to your gas appliance and then have that outside. So yeah, there's a little tab that goes into there. Next one along here, we've got the uh, storage underneath the lounge area at the back. There's a ladder in there, the cab mats are in there, and these are the silver screens that I referred to uh, on the cab earlier. So as we walk around the back then, um, we have the bike rack. That's operated by pulling these bars up here. Um, and then release this hook here and then pull this down the bikes then sit on these rails here these tabs go over the wheels to keep those in position and these bars come um, and meet the crossbar of the bike so obviously the outer one um, is the it needs the longer arm and um, the next one in the sh next shortest one etc etc and then the shortest one on the inside would use this to secure onto the crossbar so then you've got your bike sitting like that with these arms fixing onto the crossbar with these tabs keeping the wheels secure. So on the back panel you've got the reverse camera, uh, I think you've got to select reverse on this model for that to come on 
Um, so that's where the lens is for the camera pointing down so you can see the uh, back of the vehicle approaching an obstacle as you reverse. If that's wet it will give a distorted um, image uh, just because of the water and the lens. Uh, so just be, just be aware of that. But that's, that's where the camera's located. So as we walk further around the vehicle you just got access again to the uh, other side of the storage area which is underneath the rear lounge. As we move on then we come to the toilet compartment and there's an indication on the toilet itself which I'll show you inside to tell you when that needs emptying. Uh, to empty that you pull out this, pull that lever up there, that, that blue tab, so that's what's keeping it in position. Lift that up and slide this out. So once you've got the cassette out, which is the, the, the toilet waste cassette, uh, it's emptied by doing the following. You uh, take that nozzle like that, unscrew the cap off the end um, and then pour the waste away which is contained in this in this cassette. As you're pouring away from that nozzle there, press this button in and that lets air in as the liquid is pouring out to stop it sloshing um, and glugging so uh, just get, you just get a pure flow of liquid coming out. This, t this uh, cassette requires the blue toilet chemical uh, and that's put into you slide that back like that, open up this blade here um, and then that allows you to pour the chemical into there. So you pour a little bit of chemical into the bottom of it once you've emptied it uh, and then just a little bit of water on the base of the cassette and then it's ready to use again once you've, you, you can sort of swill it out. Um, you can fill it with fresh water, swill it out again to make sure that it's all clean and then add the chemical with a little bit of water. Just make when you're putting the cassette back in, make sure that that's facing forwards. Otherwise, it'll not it'll not go back in correctly. It is on wheels. This so um, you can wheel it over to the waste disposal point. Your wheels are there at the back, and then it's got a little handle at the front there, which pulls out to allow you to pull it along. So the next one along is your water. So that's just filled with a hose pipe until it pours out. So that's filling your onboard water tank, which is inside the vehicle. Um, so it's underneath the forward facing dinette seat so you just you need your key for that just unscrew that um, and uh, fill fill that with with water with a hose pipe uh, that does need emptying um, but I'll show you um, inside how you empty that so if water's left in that cassette in cold weather conditions uh, and the water freezes inside the, the tank it can damage the tank and all of the pipe work so it's important that that's drained down uh, particularly in, in winter conditions um, if you're not using it then obviously drain it down as well because you don't want stagnant water sitting in that water tank next thing to note here is the wastewater drain so basically that lever there um, you pull that that drains all the water out of the waste tank so that's everything that goes down the sink and down the shower um, and that's just uh, attached to this nozzle here that grey nozzle, end of that hose there, and then that's where your grey water uh, pours out. So if you just pull pull up to the waste disposal point for the grey water, um, drive over it, line it up with this handle here, pull the handle, and then the waste water will uh, drain out um, down the grid uh, that they've got on the sides. Next one along is the boiler um, chimney. So if you're heating your water in your van on gas, then you will get um, steam rising from here in cold cold weather. Nothing to worry about, it's just the uh, exhaust as you would see on a, on a domestic boiler at home. Um, just need to make sure that's kept uh, clear of debris as well, because if it doesn't exhaust properly, there's a sensor inside that'll, that'll cut the boiler off. Just one more thing to note on the outside is the <coughs> fuel filler, which is just there, you need your key for that. So that's on the passenger side, uh, so your fuel is filled on that side when you're pull, pulling up to the petrol station. Uh, so obviously diesel, and you just need your key for that. That's where that's situated. So we're inside the vehicle now. What I'll do is I'll just start at the front and work my way towards the back. To swivel the seats around, it's these two little tabs here. So you just pull that that way like that, and then that'll allow you to swivel the seat. And the same on the other side. Uh, for the driver's side, it's... Um, not as useful because you've got this bulkhead here but it will swivel if you wanted it to 
so above the habitation door here we have the control panel so i'll run through the controls on this for you uh first one is your pump so that what that does is it pumps water from the fresh water tank which i showed you how to fill outside pumps it through all the pipe work and then eventually out of your tap so when you first fill up with water what you need to do you switch that pump on you can probably hear it run switch the pump on and then go over to your taps uh, open it on cold first and then let that run like that what you'll get is a spluttering here uh, it, what it's doing is <clears throat> pushing out the air out of the pipe work um, and replacing it with water so you need to purge the system before you start um, switching your, your boiler on etc so you so you switch your pump on wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out on the cold side do exactly the same on the hot side and then you know that your system is primed and ready to use um, the same thing you need to do as well on the gas side of it so when you first connect your gas up switch your hob on um, let the boy let the uh, let the uh, burners light and then you know that you've got gas in the pipes rather than it, it just be air so you're pushing the air that's in the pipes out with the gas um, so then you can use all your other gas appliances because uh, the, the, the burners will, will purge the system uh, quickly so back to the control panel then so that was your water pump that's your external light so your awning light outside that's your lights for the inside so when you switch that on see all the lights come on inside the vehicle so that's a quick some of them are switched individually but that's uh, that's that'll switch everything off you've got your um temperature inside the vehicle uh this is your water so you've got uh fresh water on that one waste water uh on the red one so you press it twice you've got fresh water zero percent waste water zero percent so there's nothing in the tanks and then this one is your battery so it's showing you a picture of your motorhome so that's your leisure motorhome battery so that's reading 14.2 uh, so that's in good condition and then your engine battery and uh, 12.7 so that switches your control panel on and off so you won't get anything working without that being switched on there Next to the door here, um, underneath this cushioned seat here, we've got the 12 volt fuses. Um, so there's a fuse picker there. Uh, these are all labelled up to show you which fuse uh, is what. So they're your 12 volt fuses. Uh, so if you've got a problem with your lights or your water pump, that'd be your first place uh, to look and check those fuses. Okay, so this is this is the front diner area. Underneath this full, uh, rear facing one here, we have the um, the boiler. So that was the vent I showed you, um, where it vents out on the outside. So this is the water boiler. Um, this has got a self-protection valve built into it. So what it does is it, sen it senses that if the temperature um, inside the vehicle reaches six degrees and the pump and the water boiler isn't switched on, it will automatically drop all the water out of the boiler to protect it from freezing so that's the valve that does that job um, that's now in the closed position if it looks like that with that diamond shaped blue valve uh, pointing that way that's open so that's the winter position really there and then that is the in use position so that's how it must look before you can start to use it there's also so there's also a little blue button just on the front of that valve um, just down there at the front a little blue button at the bottom uh, that must be pressed in as well otherwise um, it won't retain its water so uh, the diamond uh, valve has got to be pointed in that direction and the little blue button which is just on the front just down there that's got to be pressed in as well just in the middle here we have the that's where the water pumps housed um, shouldn't need to really worry about that but I'm just pointing out where the water pump is okay so underneath this dinette which is the forward-facing dinette with the seat belts 
we have the water tank uh, so that's where I was showing you where it fills from the outside it goes into your water tank and fills, fills that up um, now I was say, as I was saying this needs draining down um, if water's left in here to freeze it can damage the tank uh, and obviously if it's not in use for a long time you don't want stagnant water sitting in the tank so there's this little device which um, plugs that hole which you can probably see just down there so you just push that into there push that in firmly and then push that down and that seals the tank the other one that you can see will also drain the tank but as you can see it's raised up so that will um, drain the water tank down to uh, it's probably 20 litres so that you know that you, you've still got water but you're not carrying around a full tank it'll allow you to drain uh, the tank down to 20 litres so if you pull that one out and leave that one in uh, then you know you've just drained it down so that you've still got a usable amount of water but you're not carrying a around a lot of weight that red cap is the seal for the tank it screws on just make sure that that is screwed on tightly otherwise when you're filling the water tank with your hose from outside it'll pressurize this tank and then you'll get water seeping out through this here if it's not sealed correctly so make sure that's good and tight so moving along then we've got here the fridge that's switched on and um, with the button on the left there uh, it's bleeping at me to say that we haven't got power coming in so i'll just explain what these power functions are Mains electric, um, so obviously that just you've got to be plugged in for that. It's beeping because we're we're not plugged into mains, and um, so that'll run efficiently on electric and it'll get the fridge cold. It'll stay cold. Um, next one along is gas. Um, it'll run on gas again efficiently. Um, you might just be able to hear that clicking. So that's trying to ignite on gas. Um, if it doesn't ignite, it'll bleep at us again. And then the next one along is um, battery. So that what it, that does is it uses the engine battery. So you've got to have your engine running in order for that to work. Um, it uses the engine alternator. So when you're in transit, that's the one that you need to be using. If you're on sites and you've got electric, use that one. If you're on a, if you're parked up and you're not on a site or you've not got electric, then use the gas. This controls your temperature. If it's a really hot day like today, then have it in the upper band here um, and you control that by pressing that button there and then you, you you can see what temperature it's set at if it's a really cold day then just have it on the lower bars because it'll it'll ice up so you, that's telling your fridge how hard you want it to work and um, so that's your temperature control for your fridge Uh, if you're not if you're not going to use the fridge for any length of time, leave it slightly ajar because otherwise you've got air stagnant air in here and it's totally sealed. Um, so you, you'll get mould inside there. You want you want air flowing around it if you're not going to use it. So whenever it's parked up and you're not going to use it, leave the door slightly ajar. Your hob, as I stated, you just need to switch that on when you first connect to gas to get the ash, the, the gas uh, drawn through, and then your hob control. So that's you've got arrows there pointing at that one, this one here. And then this one is for this one here. You need an igniter for that or matches or a lighter. Um, if it blows out, it, there is a thermocouple on there to uh, to stop the uh, to switch switch the gas supply off. Just be careful if these are hot, don't bring this glass lid down. If because they, they will remain hot, it can shatter this lid. And it's giving you a warning there. Don't bring it down if these are on. Just make sure they're all off because it will shatter the lid. So for the electric bed, it's this control here to bring your bed down. See, you can see it's got cargo netting on this bed here to so stop you children rolling out of bed and uh, they just clip onto these uh, here with these strings and uh, there's a light up there for the bed as well The bed that's under here is made up with the table. I'll make that up in a second. Um, I'll make the bed up and then I'll put all the cushions back. So just under here you've got your oven. Um, that's your oven setting. That's your grill setting. Uh, temperature's on there and it's got an auto ignite this. Uh, so that's pr pretty straightforward. The bathroom. So for the toilet use. Um, this is the flush for the toilet. 
So you press that button there and that flushes the toilet by swirling water around in here. Um, so the way to use the toilet is this leader here opens and closes that blade that I showed you on the toilet cassette itself. So you would open that up. That's closed. Open that up. Use the toilet. Press the flush. And then make sure that that is closed back up before you start driving. Because obviously then you'd have the contents of the um, uh, toilet cassette swishing around in here, which you don't want. So for the shower, that just pulls out of there and clips into there so it's for your shower use and there's a door here that blanks off this bit so all the rest of the washroom isn't getting wet. Uh, just make sure that's closed if that's left uh, without these securing tabs on here it'll uh, rattle around and it can break the, the uh, plastic on there uh, as you're travelling. So with regard to the rear lounge bed arrangement um, all you do with this is you pull this section out here that bridges the gap then in order that you can bring these cushions into the center so you put that one flat bring this one into the center and then that creates your bed in the rear lounge uh, area when you slide this back in just make sure you do it straight if, if this goes skew with those central bars will, will will tilt and then they won't be long enough to stay in position so just make sure it goes back straight otherwise these will, will fall out so when you pull that all the way out you're just bringing that cushion into the center and that creates your your big uh, bed for the re rear lounge all your windows and blind all your windows have got blinds and fly screens on so on this one you're pulling up from the bottom for your blind and it's got preset settings that you can have it in any position and then from the top you draw down and that's your fly screen and they clip together just like that so you can have half and half or bring the blind up all the way and then you've got the blackout blinds for the evening the skylight same again you just draw that across for the blind and that way across for your fly screen and to open that you just wind using that winding handle to open that one up this one just slides on this rail here so that's that open and closed and you just push it past that point and to release it push that in and slide it back the heating controls are just here in the lounge area on this wall here on the passenger's side so to switch this on <coughs> uh, you just push that button in the center so the first one that's flashing here is your temperature control for the um, motorhome so you you press that one in again and then that'll allow you to adjust the temperature so you set that at whatever setting you want, so 22 degrees really is to, like room temperature and then push the button in again. So that's your temperature set in. And then what it does is it, it so you're scrolling around on this uh, dial here. So the next one then is your water temperature. So press that in again and then scroll through. So you've got eco which is 40 degrees, hot which is 60 degrees boost which will switch your heating for your motor on off and just concentrate the power to the heating of the water so you won't get any heating for your van on when that's in in boost mode uh, to come out of any menu you're just pressing this back button here so then the next one along is your power source so first one is gas if you wanted to just select gas you just press the button in it takes you back to your main menu and um, so you've got gas mix which is uh, gas and electric so the electric then would be on one kilowatt next one along is mix with electric on two kilowatt electric only on one kilowatt electric only on two kilowatt the reason for those two those kilowatt settings is that if you want a site with a low ampage uh, fuse uh, you'd use the the one kilowatt so that you're not uh, you won't blow the fuse Next one along is your fan setting. You can just, if you if you set the temperature to 22 degrees, the fan will blow uh, at, a, at a setting that is relevant to the temperature that you set. You can, if you want, just set the fan to blow so that it's just vent. So you've just got the, uh, with no heat. 
Next one along is your clock settings. So you can set it to come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time. You just adjust it like that, press it in, and then end at a certain time. So there's, you, you can set it like you, you, you're heating at home. Next one along is your clock settings. So it's one o'clock now. I'll set that for you. And then you've just got your your um, your settings, um, whether you want 12 hour or 24 hour. It may be sometimes necessary to reset your reset this boiler. If you if you unplug it when it's on electric or your gas runs out, you might need to go into this reset mode here. To do that, you just click on the reset button when it says reset, then click it again, and it'll it be initializing leave it for a second and so that's reset it so if you if you if it ever comes up with a warning triangle that's the first thing that you would need to do to reset your boiler just go through that reset mode so that's how you use the boiler you just so your first one is your heating setting water setting how you want it to be heated on gas or electric vent you can set it to come on at a timer your clock settings and the various other settings uh, for the uh, control panel to switch it off you just push that button in there keep it pressed in and that'll switch that off so to make the bed up at the back uh, sorry at the front in the diner area you take the table off that rail there by lifting it like this and then that'll allow you to pull it off that rail at the top so you need to lift it first because it to take it off those teeth there and then you put the table into the center uh, and put it onto the rail which is there's another rail there and you can see the clips that hold that in position and then <clears throat> there's an elbow joint on the uh, leg of the table which you just press that button in and then it'll allow you to collapse that leg uh, into the elbow position and then you pull out these side pieces here uh, so this one here and that one and the same on the other side and that creates the base uh, for, for the cushions on the bed. In the instruction manual it's shown here how to make the bed up. Uh, I'll just see if I can put that together so you can see it. So you lay the cushions flat like that um, and then there's an additional uh, section for the uh, table that um, allows you to bridge this gap along here. And then these insert cushions which are separate uh, bridge this gap along here So there's two uh, one goes in there and then the this one Bridges this gap here. So that's your front bed made up The rear bed actually has infill cushions as well. Uh, so I've made that up uh, pulled the uh, drawer out section out and then these cushions bridge that gap. So that's your rear bed There's no need to lay those flat You get these cushions to bridge that gap one more thing I just need to note is that if this, if the drop down bed, this drop, this drop down bed ever, uh, it blows the fuse or the motor, there's a fault with the motor or the battery's flat, you can wind that back up using this tool here, which is in the instruction manual pack. You just put it into that key there, and then you can wind the bed using this handle. You can wind the bed up and down. Only needed if there's a, a problem with the bed going back up and down.